If you are a print-on-demand or Etsy seller, then you probably already know that a good mock-up photo and a bad mock-up photo can sometimes be the only difference between a product never selling at all or becoming a bestseller ranking on those first pages, making thousands of dollars every single day. Good mock-up photos can be really hard to find and they're not always one size fits all. What works in a mock-up photo for one type of product is not gonna translate to all of your products. So you need to know exactly what type of mock-ups you should be using for your store. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how I find and create my mock-ups and what type of mock-up photos I would be using on different types of listings in my Etsy and print-on-demand businesses. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step my exact process to create mock-ups super easily for shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, tote bags, and a few other print-on-demand products you're probably gonna encounter in your own business. So if that is something you're looking for, make sure you stick around. I'm Hannah and on this channel, I talk about all things print on demand and making passive income. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you'd subscribe down below for new videos every single week. Mockup photos are super important on any print on demand platform that you might be selling on, but the most important I believe is going to be on Etsy. People on Etsy are looking for a very specific look. They want something that's going to be homemade that doesn't look like it just came off a store shelf. It wasn't made in a factory. So even if you are selling print on demand photos, you need to consider what the buyer is actually looking for. When I first got started with my Etsy business and on print on demand, in order to save time and be able to get more uploads every single day, I found myself oftentimes just using the automated mockups that came with a print provider like Printful or Printify just because they're already there and they are so easy. But little did I know that actually was deterring a lot of my buyers and I was missing out on so many sales even when I had a really well-researched product with a great title and description that should have done well on SEO because they saw it was just a generic mock-up, I know that I was not getting a lot of clicks that were converting into sales. The changes I ended up making into my mock-up making process really don't add a lot of time, probably just a couple minutes to each listing, but I've seen these changes to my mock-ups really increase the amount of conversions that I'm getting. I get more clicks and more sales every single day with some of my products that have been up there for a couple of years. Once I changed the mock-up photos, I immediately started getting more traffic than I ever had. So I'm gonna walk you through right now, step-by-step, step, how I make my mock-ups. Finding your mock-up photos is the area that you could spend a lot of time and waste a lot of energy looking for the right mock-up for each of your photos. When I first started, I definitely was relying on trying to find free mock-ups using the free mock-ups that were on Canva or other sites where you could find free mock-ups. But what I found is that those mock-ups were super limited. I was having to use the same ones over and over. And one thing that I didn't love and that I definitely know is a deterrent for your customers is when you put your design on some of those images, if you don't have the right type of mock-up software, the image is going to stay flat even if there is some movement in the clothing, which makes it just look like a mock-up, it makes it look not real. So especially on Etsy, it's super important for your mock-up photos to look authentic and like a real person is wearing that design. I know you've seen it, there's nothing worse when someone just slaps a rectangle design onto a photo with a lot of movement and wrinkles in it and you can totally tell that it's just slapped together on a computer and the product probably isn't going to look like that. Even though these are print on demand products, we want to really show what the product is going to look like when it's printed on a shirt even though we don't have a physical copy for us. So the site that I've been relying on for a long time to make my mock-up is Placeit. While Placeit has amazing design features too, what I heavily rely on Placeit for is generating almost all of my mock-ups. They have mock-ups for pretty much any type of product you could be looking for. Everything from t-shirts to wrapping paper to tote bags, even more obscure things like pet clothes, baby clothes, journals, you name it. Place It probably has a selection of mock-up photos for that item. And while with a lot of other mock-ups that you see, you'll have to buy them either individually or buy a pack of mock-up photos. What I love with Place It is that you just get a monthly subscription and then you have unlimited access to all of their mock-ups, which is in 
the thousands. The first mock-up that we're going to look for today is going to be a t-shirt mock-up. Place It definitely has a ton of options, so even when you click on the t-shirt category, you'll see that on the side, they also have a lot of other options for even more refinement in the type of mock-up that you're looking for. You can go as specific as doing the type of shirt. They have those Bella Canvas 3001, as well as some other types of t-shirts but you can also say what type of model you're looking for wearing that design. For this one, I'm thinking that I both want a mock-up photo that's just going to have the product in it, as well as a female wearing this design because it's more of a girlier shirt. So I'm gonna refine that and try and find a model that looks like she could be wearing this shirt. Right, so after searching for a few minutes, I think I like this shirt right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and that way we can start getting our design that we're going to use uploaded. All right, so I am going to go ahead and upload the design that we're going to be using today. And actually this design is one that I had shared as a niche in one of my niche newsletters that goes out every single week. So if you're not already subscribed to that, make sure you do because I'm always sharing trending and low competition niches that I'm finding with you guys. I'll have a link to it down in the description. But I'm just going to go ahead and position this so it looks natural and once I push OK you can see that it formatted so that it's taking into account the folds in the fabric and that looks really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and look for a model that is a mom that we can put wearing this shirt just to showcase it in a different way. So let's see, we can even sort by mom. So I'm gonna go over to the side and push Mother's Day just so we get some more mom options that look really great. And I think I like this one. So I am going to go ahead and upload our artwork again to this design. And you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to what size it's going to be on here because sometimes it'll make it a little bit too big and you'll just have to make it a little smaller for it to look natural. But we're gonna position that and that looks really good. And for the kids shirt, you can just push that you wanna remove this image and it will completely take it off. And now we go ahead and download that. Now we're going to look for our sweatshirt mock-up. Oftentimes in print on demand, it's not always 100% necessary to put your mock-up on the exact brand of t-shirt or sweatshirt that you're actually going to be selling, as long as it looks very similar, that there's no distinguishable difference that a customer would be able to see when they're purchasing the item. But one thing that I do like on Place It is they actually do have quite a few different brands for sweatshirts and t-shirts. So if you really wanna make sure that you're showing a photo of the exact product that your customer is actually going to get, you can look for that here. Another thing I think is really cool on Place It is you can just go ahead and upload your design so you see it as a preview on the images as you're scrolling through. Okay, after looking for a bit, I think that I like this mock-up and I'm just going to go ahead and resize a little bit so it looks more natural. Sometimes the placement, they don't always get right on the first try and you'll just have to adjust it to what it's actually going to look like. And I actually have have a tutorial on how to do this wavy groovy text. It's a really popular design style that we're seeing sell like crazy this year. So if you want to know how to do that mostly with Canva, I'll definitely link the video up above. Now we're going to take a look at Placet's mugs. What I love is that they have so many different options for mugs, but they also have things like bottles, tumblers, wine chillers, pretty much any beverage holder that you could think of. Placet probably has a bunch of mock-ups for that. I integrate my Etsy stores with Printify and they have quite a few different options that you can sell for beverage holders. And I've almost always been able to find an exact match on Placet for whatever item that I'm selling. So we can look at some wine chillers here and we can also just create just a general mock-up for just your standard basic mug. All right I'm moving to the drinkware section on here and as you can see there's tons of mugs but they actually have all sorts of different drinkware that you can look at here. Wine tumblers, bottles, straw cups, really any kind of thing you could want they definitely have here. I think I'm going to do this wine tumbler. I'm going to resize it just so it looks a little more natural and how the product is actually going to look. Now I download that. Now I'm going to go look for a mug. They have both people holding mugs or just more of a lifestyle shot with a mug. Here's some on the side as well. I'm going to put the image again. And once again, you want to resize it to just look a little more natural and not so big. 
So I'll play around with it until it looks really good and what I want. And now I'm gonna go download that now that I'm happy with it. Let's take a look at their tote bag mock-ups. So again, for this, I think I wanna include both a mock-up photo of just the item by itself, as well as more of a lifestyle one for this. So let's pick out two of those and put our design on that and see how it looks. All right, so now I'm taking a look at some of their tote bag options that they have. Again, I love that they both have people and just a regular lifestyle shot with the product. For a listing like this, I might typically do one of each, a lifestyle shot and one of just the product. So once we uploaded this to this image, it's looking a little bit bigger than it's going to print as. So I'm gonna resize that so it looks more natural and go ahead and download that. Now, once we have all our designs made and downloaded, we are going to head over to our downloads and place it. And what you're gonna want to do is resize all of your photos to be in the proper proportions for Etsy if that is where you're uploading. If you are uploading to a different site, you can certainly look at what dimensions are best suited for that, crop it or resize it to that dimension. All right, so I just went over to the downloads that we created. Now I'm gonna go ahead and resize all of these images to optimize them for Etsy. For Etsy, they want you to have a 4-3 ratio for your thumbnails, and they want your shortest side to be at least 2,000 pixels. So the pixels I use are a little funny. On the shortest side, I'm going to put 2,000 pixels, and then on the longer side, I'm going to do 2,666, which you see it's already this 4-3 ratio, but it's going to make it a little bit better quality. If your picture is not already that size, you can crop it so that it is the correct size for an Etsy thumbnail and you're going to push download and when it does it's going to go up here but you're going to click download to your computer so all of the other ones we downloaded they haven't gone to our computer yet until we actually click download to our computer which is nice because then you're not saving two copies of everything. Once you have those photos downloaded you are just going to upload them to your Etsy listing just as you would any other photo. I always like to make sure that the size is optimized for an Etsy listing even though Etsy accepts any size if you do upload a size that's different than their recommended sizing you are at risk of cutting up some of that thumbnail image when the user is scrolling through the pages of etsy they could potentially not even click on your listing if you aren't showing the whole thing that's why I really recommend using those recommended sizes. And then you can get them uploaded. While I don't like to rely on the auto-generated mockups from Printify or Printful or any other print provider, one thing that I do like to do is I'm actually going to include the auto-generated mockup on my listing in addition to those nice mockups that I've made using Placeit. So I will always put my best mockups first and then at the end, I oftentimes like to include the auto-generated mockups and the several different color options that I'm going to include in my listing. That way, this just gives them the best picture of what that color is likely going to look like. And if they scroll through the photos, they're not gonna care that it's on an auto-generated one as long as that first photo is going to be more of a lifestyle real mock-up photo. I know since I didn't make great mock-up photos for my Etsy listings from the very beginning, I actually ended up leaving a lot of money on the table that I wish I could have gone back and just started making good mock-up photos from the very beginning because I know that would have converted into more sales and more profit from my business from the get-go. But there's actually a lot of other mistakes that I know I was making when I first started my print-on-demand business, so I put together an entire video for you guys with some of the other things that I wish I knew when I first got started so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did. Feel free to watch that now and I will see you in my next video.